to CJ with Georgia Astronomy here and we are continuing on the requested videos on Nina. We've had several uh, people have emailed off the website about and uh, so we're going to continue at. So in the last video we did the download for both Nina itself as well as the new uh, plate solver ASTAP and the G17 Starbase. So uh, this is now a clean copy of Nina that has just been installed on this particular computer so we're gonna jump right into the bottom of it and get through the initial setup so for right now go ahead and go all the way down here to options and when you're in two options this is where we're gonna start off at and uh, what I would suggest uh, at this point is to go ahead and connect up all of your gear so right now I've got my imaging camera connected my mount connected as well as the guiding camera connected start off with uh, it's going to come to a default this is where we're going to start with so I'm going to go ahead and name this on uh, this particular one this is going to be named the uh, Radian or let's just say the Raptor because that's the new scope that is coming it's going to be the Raptor I uh, do speak English uh, which is my uh, predominant not that I don't think it matters between the United Kingdom and the United States I think English is English but who knows so English is there, auto update source is going to be released. So if you wanted automatic updates to let you know when things are available, you can, if you're using the beta versions, you can uh, leave it for beta. So every time they release a new beta, it will alert you. I'm gonna let mine stay on release. Sky Atlas image directory, we're not gonna worry about that right now. This has been defaulted to a framing assistant. We're gonna leave that as is. Log level info, again, these are all defaults. I'm going to leave them as they are. Uh, let's go over to equipment. So under equipment, uh, here's the default pixel size, 3.8 bit depth at 16. We're going to change this. Uh, I am running an ASI 183mm, so this is actually going to be 2.4. Uh, my bit depth on that is going to be 12, I do believe. Uh, bear pattern I'm not going to worry about. Under advanced settings, we're not going to worry about these as well either. Uh, telescope, uh, the telescope name, so yeah, this is going to be the Radian. Uh, I'm not going to worry about syncing. The focal length on this particular scope is 275. My focal ratio is going to be f4.5, so there's no reason to do an f, just put 4.5 or 10 or 2, or whatever it happens to be for you. Settle time after slew, that's going to be 5 seconds, that's already a default, I'm going to leave it as is. Uh, if I had a focuser, which I have one coming, I don't have it yet, I will go over this tab in depth uh, as well as the autofocusing routine once that comes in. But for right now, I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, so we're not going to worry about anything on focus. If you did have one, though, this is where you would be able to go into and set up all of your defaults. Weather, Fahrenheit temperatures, yes, we're going to do that. We're not going to worry about Imperial units. I don't have an open weather map API key, so we're not going to worry about that either. Over here on filter wheel is where I would set up my filter wheel, but I do not use a filter wheel. These would be uh, swapping out filters manually throughout the evening, which is probably going to suck, but you know what? It's the cheaper way out. Uh, let's see. PhD guiding has been the default on here, so we're going to leave all of this as is. I'm not going to change anything. I'm going to go with what it is. Planetarium software. I'm not actually using Car2CL on this. Again, this is a default. Uh, if anything, I would probably use Stellarium, but I do not have that located and hooked up as of yet, so we're going to leave that for a leather date. Let's go over to imaging. On imaging, the uh, file image type is going to be FITS. Uh, you can have a choice between TIFF, FITS, and XIF. FITS seems to be the standard. We're going to leave that as is. Imaging file path, so where we're we actually going to save these two, this will change uh, on a nightly basis or if you're having multiple uh, different events, you will save them to those particular folders. I actually do not have an, uh, one set up as right now, so I can make a new folder and we'll just say, t whoops, we're going to say test, so T-E-S-T -E and we'll set OK. Image file pattern, again, this is kind of a default, so uh, I don't like it, let's just take it all out show you the easy way of doing this. In order to do a file pattern, uh, you can just double click on whatever you want. So we'll start off with what type of frame it is. I want a light dark. I want to know what it is and it's being done. Uh, at that point, we can have the date on it, the exposure time in seconds. Uh, don't have a filter name, so we're not going to worry about that right now. Uh, not going to worry about the camera gain or the offset. Actually, yes, let's do, do the camera gain on it and then let's also well, 
what else? Uh, dead exposure time in seconds, the gain, and I think we're going to leave it as that. Yes, right. So you don't have to type these in manually. Again, just double click and they will fall into place. Uh, this gives you the pattern review, uh, preview of how it will say. So that is a light frame on 0101 of 2016, January 1st of 2016. Uh, the exposure time is going to be 10 seconds. Uh, with the gain of 1600 so that's the way that it would come out now if that doesn't make a lot of sense to you if you want to break it up a little bit more to make it easier again you can just take these off and it will reset so there we go image type uh, you can also say name so again we'll just go uh, yeah uh, the image type let's go with the camera gain this time uh, the date of when it was done and you also have the option, I think, of uh, putting in the name of the uh, project. I thought I saw that before. I'm sure that's in here somewhere. Target name, if available. There we go. And boom. So now we have everything here. So M33. Auto Meridian Flip. Uh, I do have a Meridian Flip. We're going to put that over to Enabled. Uh, I know from my particular mount that uh, this could be about 8 to 10 minutes. I am running an Ioptron CEM25P. I know on the old uh, CEM60, I could do 10 minutes past. I'm going to do the same thing with here. Do not use 10 just because I am. Make sure you look it up on your mount. Do not call me because you crashed your scope into the legs and you're wondering why. Uh, it, look it up. It is mount specific, and it also depends on the size of your scope. Use telescope side of peer reporting. I'm going to click that on to yes. I'm not going to worry. Uh, yes for recenter after flip. Scope settle time after the flip is 30 seconds. Pause before Meridian. Uh, I am going to set that to being two minutes. Autofocus after flip. If I did have an autofocuser, that would be ticked to on. So make sure you do that on. All this is going to be default. Uh, auto stretch. Uh, again, all of this is default. I'm not going to change anything. I will do this. Park mount when sequence ends. I am going to tick that to on. Warm camera when sequence ends. I am going to tick that to on. I don't have a uh, cover over an observatory or anything, so I'm not going to worry about that. So we'll leave that as is. Okay, let's go to plate solving. Plate solve, uh, again, you had a choice of what you wanted to use, astronomy.net, local plate solvers, etc. We specifically downloaded for ASTAP, so I'm going to put ASTAP in there. Blind solve over, I'm going to leave as astronomy.net. Under exposure time, I'm going to give it uh, a good five seconds as a rule of thumb. I'm not going to worry about the filter. I am going to let it bend one by one. I'm not going to worry about the gain. All of these are still default. I'm going to leave it at arc minute, degree. Number of attempts, I am going to change that. I'm going to go up to five just in case if you get some high clouds in there. And then a delay between attempts, I'm actually going to lower that down to one minute. So five attempts, one minute in between each other. All right. So solver settings, come back. Click as tap again, and then we need to go in. This should actually automatically be uh, located, but let's just double check. So if we go in, it is under program files. In order to find that, of course, go to file C, go to program files, go to as tap. That's where it's at. Click open. It is now routed. These we're, lifted, we're leaving as uh, as is 32500. That is what it is. It's uh, standard stock. I'm going to leave it alone at that. Under About, this is where I can go back to the home page, get documentation, do all those kind of good, happy, fun things there. So, plate solving set up. Got a set up for ASTAP. It is pointed correctly. Imaging, we have uh, set for everything we want as it's going to roll. Our equipment is in, our cameras, uh, our telescope size, which again, this is important information. You will need to have it later on. Uh, and in general, we're pretty much good. So, uh, what about color? I don't like the color particularly. Uh, I am going to go in, I'm going to use a default of Dark Nebula because I just like that. I like the uh, gray and the black. Uh, I can choose to up update these or change these a little bit if I want to. Uh, you can go ahead and manually change these uh, into an alternative color scheme or you can customize it as you see fit. So you can do whatever you want there. But I like Dark Nebula. I think I'm going to stick with Dark Nebula. I will probably come back and change some of these colors, though, because I would like them a little bit more vibrant, I do believe. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's it. So, since we should have everything connected, let's go up and connect everything right now. So, on our camera, if I do the pull down, uh, actually, it already sees my camera. So, let's uh, go ahead and click that on. 
we are camera connected. Uh, there we go. And it says over here, camera connected. Good thing. I'm not going to worry about cooling it or heating it at this point. We'll just let it run at ambient. Whoops, sorry, wrong one. Don't have a filter wheel. We don't have a focuser. Don't have a rotator. We do have a telescope. So let's uh, go ahead and scan that and see if it pops up. There we go. I, I Optron CEM60. Let's pull and go ahead and pull in there and connect with that as well. There we go. Ioptron Commander is set up and running. Let's click OK. There we go. I'm going to limit this. And now it's going to ask me, uh, do I want to sync the telescope to Nina or Nina to the telescope? So what's important on this is that the scope actually knows where it's at because the scope has GPS on board. Uh, and if you notice, it's a 34 degrees latitude by negative 84 longitude. So I'm going to sync the telescope to Nina. There we go. And one thing that that did change is that if you go back here to your options, uh, noted under astronomy, I was in the northern hemisphere. I did not uh, connect for latitude and longitude. I allowed the telescope to tell it where to be. All right. Uh, so that's up and running. We're good there. On the guider, PhD, we can go ahead and click OK. That should automatically fire up my PhD. There it is. Uh, and as long as your presets are connected uh, or right correctly in uh, PhD, it will should pull that up. So if you have multiple uh, setups on that, you will have to go in there and change them before you do your connection. Alright, we don't have anything on switch. Uh, do not use a flat panel and uh, weather I don't have connected up right now. However, that is going to be on a Pegasus. Uh, Pegasus Astro Power Box. You have the Ultimate Power Box V2. Uh, and that I do believe the new Mini also has the same features on there as well. So that's where, if I had my Pegasus attached right now, I would just power that on. But for right now, we're good to go. So that's everything's connected. Everything's up and running. We are good to go on this video. Uh, and then the next one is going to be on uh, the Sky Atlas and framing.